Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Hey, we've got some stuff out there on the Patreon that we have. It's got patreon.com slash retroam. Can you name one thing that we've done there that you really like? Parasite Eve, an 11 episode miniseries. Yeah, that's a good one. We, we talk a lot about uh, Aya Brea and what's that one guy's name? Da- Daniel, da- not Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel, Daniel Bo Dulles. Yes. Is that his name? Dan- Daniel Dulles. D U L L E S. Yeah, he's cool. He's a good father. He catches on fire. I can't. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Yes. Welcome to Retro Grade Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This season, we are covering two video games, Suikoden and Suikoden 2. We are still on Suikoden 1, if you can't tell by the episode title. My name is Chris. I'm joined today by Eric. Hey, Eric. What's up, man? Hey, Chris. How's it going? Hey, it's going pretty good. We're also joined by the Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. This episode is brought to you by patron Esperwind. Thank you, Esperwind, for your support. Gern Chris. I mean, Gern Chris. We're also joined by the fake net, our post-production AI companion, who's resolved to be a better fake person for this season. Initializing fake net. Fitter. Happier. More productive. Comfortable. Not drinking too much. No, th- those are just lyrics from the Radiohead album. You, you're, you're, you're plagiarizing. Still kisses with saliva. No longer empty and frantic. Like a cat tied to a stick that's driven into frozen winter shit. Oh, yeah, don't do that fake now. This is, this is a public feed. A pig in a cage on antibiotic. <laughs> ha ha ha. So, Eric, we have done all the background information. Uh, we, we talked ad nauseum about where this ga- video game came from. Now we will do what we do best. Talk about the video game. Yes, we'll read from notes instead of haphazardly arranging different facts and figures. Shh, the people don't know that because we fixed it all in post. Of course. Damn it. Uh, so we've turned the video game on, and we've pressed start. We've named our character Tyr McDull. Not Mikdal. I can't do Mikdal. It sounds too much like a... Like Kistis. A, like a product of something. Rhinoa. Mikdal. Sounds like a, 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 a motor oil product or Wart something. Wart cream. Anyway, what's unique about this game when you, when you first... Uh, it hits the t- ground running, man. You start off in a castle? You have control of the character yes. immediately. There's no lore. There's no history. There's no conversation scene. no yeah no cg cutscene except for what we already saw but you know what there is that's familiar uh dad music yes royal palace consultation plays oh cool you have different you have different track titles than me i have track titles from zofar's domain i have track titles from i don't know where okay i think i got mine from uh khinsider.com all right kingdom hearts cool. yeah i guess uh melody of the royal palace but i mean same same difference right i'm in a room with an orange tiled floor every tile is the same tile just as every day is the same dream <laughs> damn it some guy in a green cape is in here too yep oh tight the floor is so shiny my reflection is visible yeah, this is, place must have servants to arrange all this shiny th- floors is that playstation technology right there i mean I you think could so? probably squeeze that out in the super nintendo but this one looks I don't very know, not yeah. like reflections of that resolution right yeah it's yeah. like a 240p game yeah that's true yeah and we are of course as we mentioned in control we're going to be doing some age stuff throughout this thing. Yeah, does he have a canon age? I'm pulling most of these ages from the Suikoden Wiki, which I believe cites both the game, the novels, and... It was like a Prima guide or a versus books guide yeah, for this. Yeah, perhaps. They're, the ages are also in the instruction manual as well, but we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about how those are kind of funky. But yes, we are in control of a young boy age 16. As we mentioned, he's wearing a green bandana over his short black hair. The Suikoden Wiki describes his his outfit as a Chinese Manchurian style keep out over a white shirt with matching tan pants and gloves. He has shins on his ankle. I guess that's from soccer. And he wears black Chinese toe shoes. There's no soccer in this video game. And we are waiting in what we, we can call a commencement room. It's a room that feels like designed to be waited in. Yeah, for sure. But he's next to a guy in green. What's his name? His name is Teo. Teo? Teo McDowell, yes. And, and we can speak with him. And he the will, first line of dialogue in this game is what? I don't have it word for word, so go ahead. What's the matter, Tyr? Oh, yeah. Are you nervous? He wants to know. He assures us that the audience will be finished quickly. Now I'm like, are we going to go kill the audience? Yeah. What's going to happen here? Are we going to present ourselves in front of the audience? Who's going to be finished? How are they going to finish? Where are they going to finish? 
And he reminds us to just be the way we are. The emperor is stern, but there's nothing to be afraid of. So we're about to meet the emperor. So we are not some ragtag pickpocket who is going to create a band of, of brothers to, to take on the emperor. No, we're in the emperor's service right now. Chris, something that instantly struck me is the font is thin and somewhat transparent white, and it will not be easy to read after playing and taking notes for six straight hours. Oh, I, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you're right. The font is a little, it's a little weird, a little loosey-goosey. It's no pixel remaster, but it's definitely not as pleasant as those I'm used to. But it, it yeah. is snappy. It does it, move fast. It, it rarely fills the box, you know? Like yeah. The, it's usually just a, a, a few space. Lines. Yeah. Out of nowhere, a lady in a blue dress and traditional maid garb emerges from the left side of the screen. Mm-hmm. She tells us the emperor will receive us now. And I'm like, oh shit, time to see the emperor. I'm thinking like man on throne, has a scepter, servants everywhere. Yeah. We walk over to a red carpet. Two guards wearing blue uniforms with cute sashes are positioned at the north end of the path as the path narrows. The maid lady, servant lady, says something that indicates we are Tio Mikdal and Tyr Mikdal, father and son. Mikdal. We're here for an audience with the emperor. Yep. Then we walk inside. Stop. Music. Eternal Empire plays. Yeah, I got that too. It's time to walk the red carpet between several attendants to meet a man in golden armor and a purple cloak. This is no frail emperor. This is a man of uh, a man of means, a man of battle. There's also no door to get in here. You just walk in, which seems like a security flaw. <laughs> that's true. There are some guards. That's about it. Uh, the emperor welcomes Teo with a, I think, a level of familiarity. Like these dudes know each other. Yeah. Uh, and we see his portrait. By the way, we are, we are all we are experiencing portrait characters in this in this video game. Uh, usually, when a character has a portrait, it means they're important, uh, not necessarily that they're going to join our party, like uh, like some other games we've we've seen before. Uh, the emperor has the portrait character isn't everyone. It is just characters with some level of importance. Yes, yes. Okay. The emperor has a huge, thick ass Mario stash and shoulder length hair. I would say. I think we described him previously as uh, Jake the Snake esque. My notes, aside from that, are this guy is a fucking wreck. He looks like Sneff, but with less sleep and more alcohol abuse. His mustache is gross. The area above his eyes is red. He looks like people beat the shit out of him all the time. I think that's a a product of the of the art style here. Is it's very like loose, painterly looking. Like the the character, the, the the lines of, of. So he's not supposed to have a bloody nose. I don't think he's supposed to have a bloody nose, Eric. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Tao says that things are as they were when they fought together in the War of Succession. My next question was, is this motherfucker the emperor? Yes, he is the emperor. And before I, you go, I thought the lady in the blue and purple next to him, I just thought that was the queen. Yep. Instantly. It's not? Nope. Go ahead. Barbarossa calls Tao's words impressive. And then he asks the woman at his side, her name is Wendy, if she but agrees. Like the wind. Not like Wendy, like the fast food eatery, but yeah. like Wendy, like the wind. Or Peter Pan's friend. Wendy, a woman with a decorative wizard robes and blonde hair tied behind her head, responds with an indeed. They are the words of a great general. They're friends, but they're also v- making sure that Teo knows that he is a uh, he, he is respected amongst them. He is not their equal, but, you know, pretty damn close. And what was the war they all fought together in? The War of Succession. Where all the vile Roy children battle for father's control of their crumbling media empire. Oh, you mean Succession, the HBO show? Yes, I've yes. not seen that. It's, um, that's not what this is about. No, we'll talk more about the War of, war of Succession as we get some more context for succession it. Succession of Wars. Yeah, but but ultimately it was the war that led to the the Scarlet Moon Empire being the Scarlet Moon Empire, and Barbarossa here being the king. His I name pre- is Barbarossa. Did we say that? Yes. Okay. I appreciated Wendy's blue highlights in her hair. That's very uh, like makes me think she has magical powers yeah. because her hair is an unnatural color. Yeah. Barbarossa goes on, mentioning to Teo that he is aware of the troubling activity in the north. He asks Teo if he'd be willing to travel there to protect the border. Then, I mean, somebody else chimes in, a non-portrait character, his name is Minister Greg. Yes, Greg chi- Minister. <laughs> ch- chimes in and says that our disputes with the United City States of Jouston Jesus. are complicated. But with General McDowell in charge, we can rest assured. Yeah, if he shows up and looks hard, they can rest. Do you like the term United City States of Jowston? Jowston upsets me. J O W S T O N E. That is unnatural and uncomfortable, and I wish it were called something else. Uh, I've got I've got some good news for you, Eric. What? Uh, this is where Suicoden Two takes place, and they relocalize it just to City States of Jowston. Great, no Jowston. E- yeah, with no e at the okay, end. Okay, so, perfect. Uh, we'll learn more about that uh, down the line. The first hint that there is uh, some uh, geopolitics and geography involved with uh, how this game plays out. Unprompted, Barbarossa invokes the name of his beloved sword, Prak. That sounds like a Klingon word. Yeah, I know. P R A K K. And <laughs> P R A K K. Yeah, and mentions that it has brought him luck on countless occasions. But then he's like, you want this? Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of a... Like, what the hell? That's a gesture, because we'll find out, but a lot of characters in this universe have named swords, and they're always very precious to them. 
and he's like, you want this. And is it like the power of Christ compels you? Like, like what are, is he obligated to take this or do you have to, you like, if the king gives you his sword and it's shittier than your sword, must you take the sword? I guess. Okay. But I, he, he, a lot of, I imagine a lot of people like their own shit. Like, like baseball players, like I'm not using that bat. I want my, yeah. my good Louisville slugger. It's true. And you know how this, this, this moment is important, right? Because Teo does a sword reception animation. Like oh, okay. His sprite lifts his arms up and I don't think that animation will ever be used again, but we'll find out if he <laughs> accepts any more swords or anything. Chris, something about unique about this game is every time there's a new dialogue box from a different person, it plays a sound effect. Yeah, the boink. Thing. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah do you want to do that every time we change? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. That's a nightmare to edit. That's not happening. <laughs> you can put it on the board. Um, I thought I would... Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. I thought I wanted to ask you is what the shit time period is this supposed to be? Are we supposed to assume it is? Is it supposed to be like 1100, like the water margin novel? Or is this just like vaguely medieval with whatever magic shit we want to inject into it? Yeah, vaguely medieval from the Eastern sense, like a low tech empire with that that is held together by... Uh, politics and magic. <laughs> Let's put so, it that way. like something we later on we go to the sewers, and that was like, do they have plumbing? Or are there toilets? That's a good. Well, I think we pro- well they probably have sewers because they have to have sewers because this is a JRPG. I know, but I need but, a practical reason for them to exist in this yeah. universe other than I have my meeting room down there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Teo swears not to disappoint Barbarossa, and uh, get, and Barbarossa gives his blessings. Tyr then steps forward for some reason, apparently meeting Barbarossa for the very first time, despite living like thirty feet from his palace. <laughs> yeah. He asks if I want to give the emperor, the empire a helping hand while my father protects the northern border. And this is very like, it's my first day visiting the empire. Like, do you want to help out the empire yeah. too, son? Did you, he used a word that I didn't know. Quite an impressive little countenance. Yeah. I didn't know what that word meant. I still don't. What does that well, word mean? Well, I looked it up. It means like expression or visage. It's like, he's basically telling him that he has a good look about him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, Did you just reply, you don't, sir. Please get some more sleep. <laughs> and then you get your first choice of dialogue, right? Mm-hmm. You can reply, yes, your highness, or I don't want to. Yep. And I don't want to, to me, gives me like hope that the localization will be something more than a one-to-one translation because I don't want to is like kind of petulant and childlike, but also some personality to it. Yeah. Although as I found, no matter what you respond with, it really doesn't matter too much. No, it doesn't. He, If you choose, I don't want to, he kind of laughs and says, oh, you remind me of your father b- back in the day. Yeah. You're becoming more like your father. Uh, he it, then, I'd say, uh, I will. And he says, I shall look forward to seeing you grow into manhood. And I'm like, it, does he wants to see me reach puberty. What are we doing here, Barbarossa? Yeah. Tell them thanks him. Then Greg Minister pipes up. Yeah. Telling us Commander Craze with a K yeah. of the Imperial Guard will be tier superior. Craze compression. Dude, when I saw Commander Craze, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> like that, that is, an, that is an exceptional name. K-R-A-Z-E. This guy could be anything. Yeah. Wendy walks forward and I think fucking hits on tier. She yeah. says, what an attractive young man you are. Good luck to you, tier. As we part, Barbarossa tells tier he hopes his efforts surpass Teo's. What are we thinking about Wendy right now? Like, I thought it was queen at this moment, but later she her title is revealed as court magician. Yes. Okay, yes. that's all we were supposed to know about court magician? Yeah, yeah. I think the the point of her stepping forward and, and speaking with Tyr, like the whole reason it's staged like that is to introduce the fact that Wendy is probably somebody that's important that we're going to need to keep okay. an eye on. Because I'm just, there's so many portrait characters right now and I know about this game's history of so many characters. I'm like, who's important, who's not? Will yeah. everybody I meet be on my team? Answer, no, actually. But a lot of times, yes. We then, then, yeah, the music switches back, right? We ought to walk out of the throne room. Then Tao says, let's go without any mention of whether or not this is reality. <laughs> it's true. We don't know yet. Royal palace consultation resumes. Mm-hmm. If we try to go back into the throne room, the guards say, hell no. Yeah. One actually says, be off, but then corrects himself to say, please be on your way. Be so off. again, more personality. Like guy upset at work just says, fuck off, then corrects himself because yeah. he realizes it's work. Now Tao is in my party. He walks into me. No, he's not. Well... Is he following you or is something. he something? I think like, do I have a party? Is he in my party? I don't think he's in your party because he doesn't. He, he's actually following you. He didn't. He didn't go inside of you like he, like a Final Fantasy character. Okay. So he's just he's just following right now. I think. But you can wander a little bit and go into one of the other commencement rooms there. Yeah, I talked to everybody here in the immediate room first. Oh yeah, go ahead. First servant asks if Lady Wendy was in the audience because she bears a close resemblance to Lady Claudia, and Barbarossa still mourns Claudia's passing. My wife left me. Oh, wait, so she's dead or she left No, him? she's dead. I just oh. wanted to say that. <laughs> <All> Sorry. <right. laughs> Hiring a magician who specifically looks like my dead wife is an interesting strategy. <laughs> it is. It is. Marrying a lady who looks like mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the room above us, as Chris said, is who? It's uh, Kasim Hazil. Cool name. Kasim, yeah. He's another mustachioed man. 
Uh, he's got like a head covering, like he's about to go head out into the desert or something. Yeah, I've got Saharan headgear with threatening mustache. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he tells Teo that it looks like he's brought a fine son into this world. I envy you. I understand they're telling the player this, but it's all like everyone's meeting Tyr for the first time. They all live here. In this in this dialogue, Teo tells him that he's embarrassing him, and then if you speak with him again, Kasim says that considering that he's one of the five great generals, this is a terribly long wait. Yeah, wait so, for what? Like, it's as if his turn to go defend the northern border? I think he's waiting to see the emperor. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And, and so we're immediately introduced to the fact that there are five great generals. I don't think we know that Teo was one yet, but he is. And uh, they all they all fucking live here. So how, how come they haven't seen them yet? I don't know. Then we can walk downstairs and yeah, this game has excellent stair sound effects. And also the stair, it's unclear if you're going upstairs or downstairs. Yeah, the the uh, one sprite three dimensionality there is not great. Yeah, I guess depending on your point of view, it could be either. I move toward the center of the room and down a red carpet. Teo stops here and tells him that this is Craze's room. Yeah, and that I'll be reporting to him starting tomorrow. He then asks me to go introduce myself, but I say fuck that. No, we got to go into the room in the right, the That's other right. waiting room. Three wandering NPCs. And my favorite thing is just like a room with three dudes walking in circles. Yeah, it's great. I love it. This is some classic RPG stuff right here. Stuff that we have, I've kind of missed this stuff because there's not too many wandering people in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, um, it's just guys being, well, well you can't because they're polygons. You got yeah. a budget. Or even Chrono Cross, there's not too many, most people are stationary. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the background. <laughs> yeah, could be. Anyway. Just guys being dudes. Yep. Only one of note talks about shiny boots and how he dreamed of joining the Imperial Guard since he was a kid. Yeah, I really want to be a cop. Yeah. <laughs> he played a lot of Virtual Cop. Reload. The suit of armor on the right has 100 bits in it. What the hell are bits? Oh, it's money. Bits are money. And that is also the, the first time we get to hear the wonderful, uh, I mean, most people refer to the sound effect as the recruitment sound effect because yeah. it, it happens when you get characters on your team, but uh, also happens when uh, when great things are found out in the world, such as $100. <laughs> I was blown away by that sound effect. Like, yeah. The, the general quality of the music and sound effects in this game is well above what I was used to. Like, it's not yeah. MIDI based. It sounds like actual instrumentation recorded. Yeah. And not just kind of synthesizers. I go below the craze area. It's at an entry hall with wandering NPCs. One of the lady in purple says, Lady Wendy is the new court magician and bears a resemblance to Claudia. So all these servants think the same thoughts. Are they clones, Chris? Uh, maybe. The standard NPC variety is very low. But I guess it's made up for the fact that there's a very, very diverse uh, number of unique sprites in this game. Did you go outside before you talked to Craze? No, I didn't realize you could do that, actually. I went and talked to Craze next. Briefly, I went outside the fountains. You open the door to leave, and there's a good creaky door sound effect. Yeah. South is a courtyard with a bunch of fountains audible in the mix. Two identical marble statues are on each side of the entrance to the palace. The fountains become less loud as you move away from them. Chris, it's attention to detail. That's yeah. what matters. I think that the fountains here sound just like straight up like white noise. Like the shit I pipe into my head when my ears are ringing too loud. Like mm. it, it just, it doesn't sound like water to me. Off to the right are some stables. There's six horses that are docked and eating hay. The stable hand has a curious thought though. The stable hand wonders, what's wrong with craze? Excuse me, dirty old craze. Dirty old craze. Dirty old craze. Staring at me with those nasty eyes. I don't like that fat assistant commander either. Whoa. So we have a fat phobic stable hand, Chris. Cool. So then we go see Craze. Yeah, so I guess you can't talk to these people at all because after the Craze thing, you're ushered out yes, automatically. Yes, you are so auto-walked. I missed that. So yeah, let's go talk to Craze. Uh, he's got the, the classic villain goatee and a very bad haircut. He's also in a room with two huge candelabras and a mustard yellow rug made from animal skin. What I the got, hell is this? He's got a desk too. Yeah, and a desk. Couldn't care less if we're the son of a great general. We'll get no special treatment here, understand? He has a mullet and some elaborate facial hair. He's also smiling, which is a warning sign for some kind of personality defect. Yeah. He tells us the work starts tomorrow, so uh, then, we, then we have to leave. As we leave, Teo notes that he is quite surprised that we are assigned to, quote, such a weakling. Uh, yeah, so Teo doesn't have a high opinion of Craze. No. Then he says that Gremio must be worried sick. I must know who or what a Gremio is. Yeah, you do. I'm sure you've heard me talk about Gremio before. Tail leads us out of the castle into the courtyard with a bunch of fountains. We already talked about that. Then uh, we go to the town of Greg Minister. Yes, we're here in Greg. It's Greg Minster, but I always, I've always said Greg Minister because I'm an idiot. Beautiful Golden City plays. It is a beautiful Golden City, but only for a moment. We also we do get to see one unique thing about the city before we actually get to explore it. It's that there's, uh, it's got the thing where the birds are hanging out and they fly away. Yes, the power of the PlayStation, Eric. That's right. Imagine playing this in '95 and seeing that. I mean, shit. never mind that Terra Nigma did that, but sure. I, Terra Nigma didn't come out in the U.S. when I went. In, <laughs> okay, I didn't know. First time you've seen that shit. Yeah, birds flying away. Yeah, I mean, ter I mean, it's, it's funny because Terra Nigma and this game are, are very uh, much contemporaries in terms of the time in which they were released. Actually, yeah, developed, good point. So. But then our father auto walks us into our auto house. That that's, I hate when my father auto walks me into, into his auto house. Uh, and we get my, 
maybe one of my favorite songs in this game, the main theme guitar arrangement. And it's funny that it's that it's called guitar because this is a real fucking guitar. It's not a MIDI. It's not a synthesizer. They're playing guitar in my video game. The power of CD technology yeah. is in sort of enough megabytes to play guitar music. Like this and the large sprites of the characters are really selling me on the idea of a 32-bit RPG before, yeah. without polygons. Like this mm -hmm. is something that like, I think if you took this home from the store, you would be impressed with what you were getting over Final Fantasy VI or uh, Chrono Trigger. Well, not Chrono Trigger, I think, was more stylistically competent than six. But yeah. like it, it, to me, this was like, this feels next gen if you haven't played games from two years in the future yet. Yeah, that's true. Hurried Grimio comes barging out into the, this like entranceway or lobby of the of this house. Grimio is a man with a striking blonde... Are you fucking serious? What? A man? Yeah, Grimio's a man. I with Reddit coded as a woman. My entire notes assume Grimio's female. <laughs> um, I mean, we could double check this, but I'm yeah. almost positive that Grimio's a man. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. That's interesting that you read it that way. Fakenet is... Gri <laughs> uh, How does Grimio present Fakenet? Initializing Fakenet. Presentation of non-sentient beings is open to interpretation, but Grimio is written as a man. Thank you, Grimio. I mean, fake in, in literature, what is Grimio defined as? Grimio can be a Spanish word, meaning guild in English. Yes, thanks. Grimio has striking blonde hair and a cross-shaped scar on his cheek. It's a badass side profile. Yeah. It, it is a great contrast because Grimio is... He's totally a mom. He's very mother-like. Yeah, that's what, like, I assumed yeah. it was... She was yeah. He was... Sorry. Yeah. It's a touchy subject. No, it's fine. Because Grimio very much acts like very worried, very concerned, very on the side of caution all the time as, as a traditional mother figure would in an RPG from 1996. Yes. And we'll find out here pretty soon that Tyr McDowell has no mother, living mother. So yeah. uh, he's filling that role. Uh, Grimio welcomes the, quote, young master home and nervously asks if everything was okay. Grimio is an awesome name, by the way. Yeah. It's like halfway between Grim Gremlin and Mellow Yellow. Okay. Two things I like. I like Mellow Yellow. On occasion. Uh, anyway, Grimio was so worried. Teo says that he shouldn't worry so much. Grimio didn't even notice Master Teo was there because he's so enthralled with, not enthralled, but he's so worried about w what Tyr's experience was there. When Grimio called Teo Master Teo, I didn't know if Grimio was maid, mom, or sister. Oh, okay. And he's none. None. <laughs> yeah. No. And But are, is, is Grimio under employment? Are they paid? So... I don't know if this if this backstory comes out in the video game. It, it doesn't matter to talk about it now or, or or when we get the context later. But Grimio was a he fought alongside Master Teo in the War of Succession. And, and now just has to work as a housekeeper and, and stayed as as like his retainer. Yeah, oh, and, okay. and and ultimately became the, so more halfway between bodyguard and raise my kid for me. Yes, exactly. Okay. Teo then calls it like he sees it. He's like you're the only one you seem to care about is Tear, which is communicating what it's the game is already showing us. Grimio suddenly realizes that his fucking stew is burning or something and runs off. Yeah, so that again coded his mother because, like, they're doing the cooking yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Then you have a little bit of free roam here. Where'd you yeah. go first? I leave to go explore and I leave my house. Beautiful Golden City resumes playing. Oh, you explored Gregminster before this. Really, I was going to explore to find a save point. You can progress with the story or you can do the, the exploration after this next story event. So you want to do that now? Which part? The exploration. Sure. Okay. I have some fun facts about... Greg Minster from SuicoSource.com. I don't, these are unsighted. I don't know where they come from. I don't know if they come from the novels or what, but we're just going to treat them as canon. If they're unsighted, you can just say whatever you want. Okay, sure. Uh, there's a lot of facts in there. I've deleted all the ones that have anything to do with the storyline here. Uh, but the population here is 19,000 people. The industry is arts, ceramics, and wine. Hmm. Since the War of Succession, Greg Minster has been the political and bureaucratic center of the Scarlet Moon Empire. Th this I was city, led to believe this city is kind of moneyed, too. Oh, yeah. Greg Bannister was actually destroyed during the Succession War by the forces of Gail Rugner. But the Golden Emperor Barbarossa Rugner, which I guess was a, a family member, yeah. thus the War of Succession, rebuilt the city to new heights. The capital city has been the house of many high officials of the Scarlet Moon Empire, coupled with the long history of the city. People who live here tend to have a certain elitism over the rest of the, the, the country or the empire. The bulk of the economy in Greg Minster comes from mercantilism. Is that how you say that? Mercantilism. 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 And Greg Minster is mainly known for its art and ceramics. Uh, this is all due to Barbarossa's policy of protecting and nurturing art and culture. The architecture of the city reflects this, and all houses are built with ivory-colored walls and contrasting red doors. Thank you, SoeCoySource.com, for that information. Some guy outside the house where I live asks me what I am doing here. Yeah. An Imperial General Tao's house, which is a reasonable question since Tyr was born yesterday. <laughs> White birds are walking around and pecking at shit, but fly away when I get close. Like Chris said, the 32-bit dream is alive and well. It is. 
There's a big gold fountain in the center of town. It's an angel complete with wings and a halo dumping water out of a bucket. It um, empties into a pool. It's self-positioned on top of an octagonal arrangement of marble tiles. Uh, according to Suiko source, this statue is called the Golden Goddess Statue. It was made by the renowned artist Basile. Ba- Basil. I don't know if that's a character in the game or not. Uh, it is said to that a statue, the statue is a mirror image of Barbarossa's late Empress Claudia. So not only did he marry somebody who, or employ somebody who looks like his wife, he also put a statue of her. Are you a big wife guy if your wife's dead? Can you be a wife guy with a dead wife? Yeah, if, if everything is still about your wife. Did you talk to the guy standing out there? Yeah, he says that the Greg minister was virtually destroyed during the Seven Year War of Succession, yet now it's all so beautiful. All thanks to the emperor, bless him, bless him. So yes. the emperor is being deified by the local populace for improving their lives. Yeah. There's another guy near there, I think, wearing a little bit fancier clothing. Mm-hmm. And he's complaining about poor people, a.k.a. country bumpkins, I think yes, is the term he uses. wandering around, and the capital is going down the drain. Someone from Rockland to the east has lost their way. They want to know where Master Millich lives. Chris, is Master Millich a character we're going to meet later? Yes. In fact, I know where his house is. Tyr tells her, and she can't believe this shit, and says, it's ugly, I mean, unique house. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. A guy wandering around in a blue robe asks if Tears ever heard of rune crystals. Yeah. Quote, you can have them attached to you by a rune master. That gives you magical powers. Yes, that, there's your t- tutorial for runes. If yeah, you that's read it. The, manual. Yeah. the shop right next to him inside has one dude, a desk, and a crystal ball. Options are attach, remove, and end. Yeah. What's your favorite, Chris? Attach, remove, or end? Um, I prefer to end. I do too. <laughs> yeah. A knight guy in the bottom left says there's an excellent blacksmith in Lennon Kemp, which to me is a tip to where that's where you go to improve your weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This game doesn't have weapons that you buy and sell. You just upgrade individual character weapons and having such a huge cast of characters that simplifies it. it. Yeah, it makes it much easier to to maintain. Another wandering fool is in love with his urn, which he got from a furball, Chris. Yeah. He had it appraised and wow, it turned out to be Celadon. Yeah, there's apparently valuable. There's another tutorial. You will occasionally occasionally find antiques. You take them to the antique identifier and it will be one of, of several random things, which you can use to sell or decorate later in the game. I was just curious, like, will I ever learn the mystery of Celadon? Uh, Celadon City from Pokemon. That's right. Yes. Then I went into the pub. Marie is a bartender. She has a portrait and a look of constant open mouth surprise. Yes, that's an interesting read that she's the bartender. I believe that she's the innkeeper, but go off, Ken. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up, Bartender, Marie? innkeeper combo. <laughs> She tells Tyr if he wants to rest to go home. He's a bit too young to be in here. That's why I thought it was a bar. Yeah. Your options are stay, don't stay, and save. Hey, you can save in bars. I yeah. picked to stay and it fades to black. Did I just sleep here, man? The back left corner has three tables and chairs, and it's full of plates with drumsticks and bottles of wine and shit. One knight back here talks about Lady Sonia Shulin. Yeah. Commander of the Imperial Navy. Not only a swords woman, but a magician as well. And she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. His table mate says General Teal McDole. McDoll. McDoll is the victor of 100 battles out of how many, Chris? I've... 100. Perfect ratio. Oh, wow. The guy at the top right table says General Quanda Rossman is the... That's a name generator. Mm -hmm. Is the greatest general. His buddy thinks General Millich, the flower general, is powerful too. Top class expertise in swordsmanship and magic and always so well dressed. So we've got like a lot of like soldiers hyping up their favorite generals while drinking. Mm Mm-hmm. Upstairs in the pub are five bedrooms. Most of them have a clone of the exact same guy with an orange vest and blue pants. Yep. This is very unsettling to see them all milling around. They're all like, they're all very like enthusiastic travelers. Yeah, they don't have anything of note. Really. Yeah, one of them has a romantic dream of, of like traveling, and the other one's complaining about the all of how all of his taxes go to these fucking people here. Yeah. 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 Fucking taxes. Good lord, there's a third floor. It's small and it's got a rug and a table against the wall, and I can't wait to see what plot reason this will exist for later. Item store. Yeah, item store. You can buy some medicine, antitoxin. And that's it. Yep. Low stock, early video game. The wandering NPC tells me not to shop here, that I'll get cheated. The clerk then yells at him. The other guy sells here uh, equipment, but I don't have any money. Yeah, if you come here after the after dinner, he'll ask uh, about how Grimio's banquet went. Okay. And then say that, collect the bill later. Sure. So we got a tab. Great. Big ornate house on the top left. Yes, Master Millich's house. It's full of golden closets, full of clothes in the form of item descriptions. Chris, I wrote them all down. Me too. Like to hear them. Yeah, sure. Uh, you wrote them all down as well? Uh, of course I did. Let's I've, I've been talking. Yeah, you, you take half, I'll take half. Okay. You, uh, well, what if we didn't write them down in the same order? Fucking shit. You take them all. <laughs> 
Okay, and you know what? This is one thing I didn't remember. I don't think, because I've never really, I, I mean, obviously I've played this game a lot, uh, many times, but I'm not sure if I really did uh, the full town exploration stuff, talk to every NPC, think about what they say and stuff. We should have power ranked these. Bonus episode, patreon.com slash retroam. Uh, hemmed red cape, lame tuxedo, big feathered hat, orange tights, rainbow colored pantaloons. I love the word pantaloons. It's pretty good. I, I, I just want to say it. Pantaloons. 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 Green suspenders, fine fur cape with sapphires, fruit printed tie, checkered beret, pink boots, leopard pattern cape, floral shirt, see through bodysuit. Ew. Striped socks. I've got some of those. Sea otter t shirt, negligee, triangular hat, leather jacket with rivets, spikes, and safety pins. I don't have one of those. I think it's Squall's closet. Peppermint green blazer. I disagree. Squall wouldn't have safety pins. That's true. Black and red half coat, very long hand woven scarf, elegant party dress with peacock feathers. Fuck yeah. Khaki riding pants with golden butterfly embroidery, watermelon patterned summer sweater. That's my favorite. Then we can go upstairs and talk to fancy ass Millich Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's up here. He's, he's trying to decide what he's going to wear to this, see the emperor. It's a pretty tall dude with a pink hat, orange cape and blue clothing. Like he's just, I, I, I read vanity from this guy. Yeah. He's clearly his whole house is full of costume options. Yeah. He's, he's very obviously, um, in, inhabiting a particular trope. Yeah. Like fa- fancy bad guy. Is general. Our, oh, Don, Don Flamenco. What? You said bad guy. I got like a Pierre read from him. Yeah. Pierre. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Poser bad guy. Like, mm-hmm. like puts up a front, like a very conservative fashion. And his portrait has a hand on his face and the thinking pose along with his massive pink hat and Dutch boy blonde bowl cut. Yes. It's great. And if you think about it, like both Kasim Hazil and, and Milich are both preparing for an audience with the emperor and Teo just did the same thing. So he's I in just, the process of summoning his generals. Like in, like I'm reading whatever Joe Abercrombie book now where the emperor in that just has to receive fools all day and make judgments. And I picture that's what's happening right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, what else you got? Bottom left, small house. Mm-hmm. Lady here by herself. She misses those days seven years ago. Quote, the emperor was a wonderful person back then. Mm-hmm. But now, dot, dot, dot. I would like to know more, Chris, but she offers nothing. Nope. Then I go back home. Oh, you didn't go to Sonia Solon's house? I must have missed it. What's there? Well, it's Sonia Solon. <laughs> She's there. Who the hell is that? Uh, she is one of the five great generals. Remember the, the guys oh, at the bar yeah. men- mentioned her? Okay. I didn't see her until after we learned that Taya was, was departing for the North. I, I do think there's a couple of different things that she can say, but I came later. She mentions that she wishes she could accompany Teo, but she has responsibilities as an Imperial general. She says she feels much better when she see, sees Tyr's face. She does have a diary here that will that you can read on her nightstand that will say after Teo leaves, it'll say that uh, she's glad that she could be with him last night, if only for a moment. So, oh dear, yeah. So there nice. is there is some uh, not not yesterday, last night, wink wink. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. th- that that's going on between two of the two of the five generals or six generals or whatever you want to call. She say Tyr, you can call me mom. Yeah, no, nope, she's not the mom, and she does have her her maiden here says she does not look well since hearing of of Teo's northern assignment if you come here later a little bit later Teo will be here talking to her telling her about the departure really yeah yeah i appreciate that how about how characters move in and out of like they're they're not static yeah to a certain extent yes i I think after he leaves the house he comes here Uh, of course he does yeah that's for that one night uh anyway a little bit out of order but it it makes sense now you ready to go back to back home yes let's go back home okay Ted walks in the door when I go either upstairs or downstairs. I can't tell where the hell these stairs are. He's wearing blue and gold, and he has a short, sandy brown hair. He kind of looks like shit. Maybe that's the art style. He looks like he's Tyr's age. He says he's heard the news and asks Tyr to tell him all about the Emperor. He demands that they go upstairs to Tyr's room right now so Tyr can tell him all about it. Yep. God damn it. Ted then gets in my party, and it plays that wild sound effect as Ted joins the entourage victory music. We get in the room and Ted begs Tyr to let him join his entourage. And I'm like, why are they why are they saying entourage? Like, why would you just call it a party? But no, entourage will mean something different later, I assume. Yeah, I think it's it ceases being entourage and, be, and becomes something else as the story progresses. Okay. Ted says, I owe so much to Master Tio, who adopted me when I was an orphan, and I want to return the favor. So I'm like, okay, Ted is stepbrother type thing? Yeah, yeah. He lives here. He, he does. Okay, because it is very... I'm here and it's my first day on earth mm-hmm. like memory wipe shit so uh, Tyr has a portrait now too which I just noticed Tyr didn't have a portrait previously yeah he did no oh, well I just noticed it oh <laughs> good job <laughs> um, you can say of course or I don't know about the entourage I say of course and Ted says he knew Tyr was a good friend 
He asks me a nice question. What kind of man was the emperor? And tell me about Wendy, the court magician. Was she beautiful? He wants to know if she was hot. Come on, tell me everything. Yep. And it just blows my mind that it was Tyr's first day at the palace. Like, it makes sense that he's come home and tell his yeah. friends about his day at the palace. But it just seemed weird about, like, mm-hmm. your dad's a top military guy. You've lived here for seven years. It's your first time walking to the palace. Yeah. yeah. It's a little awkward. It then fades to black. And when it comes back up, it's clear Tyr just recounted the situation. All Ted got out of it was, I sure would like to see Wendy in person. Ted then hesitates. He hems and hauls, saying he doesn't know how to tell Tyr something. Can you keep a secret? Can you promise not to tell anyone what I'm about to tell you? And I'm rubbing my hands together like, oh shit. Yep, I love secrets. But then Gremio yells out to the young master that supper is ready. I love when people call it supper, by the way. Yeah, supper's pretty good. When I was taking steroids to fix my unfucked back, it told me to take them out after dinner. After supper? After supper. Yeah. Ted stops and says it's time to eat, and then we can talk some other time. Suspense, Chris. Mystery. What's it going to be? Now, he wants to get in the palace and see Wendy. I think, did, so you didn't go straight to dinner after this, did you? I used Tears Diary to save my video game to a memory card. Oh, okay, I, I, I discovered you could do that as well. Did you go straight to dinner after that? Or did you go back downstairs and explore? In what I assume is the kitchen, there's a single whole fish on the table and an untended pot of stew. I tried to read Cleo's diary, but it's locked. Okay, so you missed some stuff because you talked to Ted first. So if you, come, if, if you go upstairs and talk to Ted, it, it rearranges the house. So if you go and talk... Into, what the hell? Rearranges the house? Well, in terms of not... Re- <laughs> excuse me. It rearranges who's in what... In what oh, okay. Everybody's going to dinner. <laughs> like, is it like a... Is it everybody, everybody goes to dinner after you talk to Ted. So there's some, there's some dialogue you can have oh, before that. from before so, people. Okay, because yeah. I, I hadn't met uh, Pawn or uh, Cleo yet. Yeah, so let's... Uh, I have all that, so let's Great, do that. Great, let's do it. Okay. Uh, you can go into Pawn's room, and he's asleep in bed. You can you get two choices here. Dude, the pre dinner nap, what a dream. Yeah, he's asleep, and you can you get two choices if you try to speak with him. You can scare him or leave him alone. I choose scare him, and you get the boing sound effect. Have you heard the boing sound effect? No, does it sound like uh, when you hit the back of a door? It's it's a boy. Uh, yeah, like Beavis. He, I have it. Here okay. it is. And he wakes up. He doesn't seem mad either. He's he notes he's like, oh, you're home. Uh, I fell asleep waiting for dinner. And then he asks about our audience with the emperor. Like it's a little bit ego stroking, but it does feel like everyone here is very glad to see me. Yeah, Pawn, His appearance is of the um. He's got a Ryu band yeah. tied around his head. My note for Pawn was parentheses Ryu. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh, we, we both arrived there at the same time. You can also read Pawn's diary. Did you read Pawn's diary? No. Oh, Pawn's diary is great. Ready? Yeah. Date. Four slash XX. I guess the fourth. I don't know. Uh, breakfast, toast and eggs. Lunch, sandwich. Dinner, croquettes. What's a croquette? Bread. Sure. A date. Five slash XX. Toast and fried eggs. Lunch, rice balls. Is this a food journal? Dinner, roast beef. Date. Six slash XX. Toast and... And then it gives an ellipsis, uh, implying that this just goes on forever. So Pond just writes down what he eats. Okay. He's, he's no, ch- I mean, like, that's boring as shit to me, but I can appreciate someone with that kind of dedication. He, he's he's uh, tracking his gains. Yeah, of course. There you go. For fighting. You can go into the kitchen here, and Grimio is still here finishing dinner. And he says that his hands are full right now. This is the most important step when making a stew. We get two choices here. Tickle him or pull his ears. And you, if I'd have seen him here, it would have clarified a lot. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Because yeah. Grimio was not gendered since I've been playing this. Yeah, good point. Either one of those options present a boing sound effect. Great. And it's great. And, and Grimio's like, young master, stop it. Blah, blah, blah. I wish there, you know that time to sewers thing for all video games? I wish there were a time to tickle. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we code in, followed by several Yakuza games. Next, you can go into Cleo's room and Cleo's in here and she uh, jumps forth and chastises Tyr for entering a lady's room without knocking. Wait, what? Cleo's female? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep okay well uh i've lost my ability to uh see traditional gender roles chris well i've got cleo as male for the entire uh, duration of my notes that i'll have to control f and unfuck uh later so cleo does have like short hair and doesn't necessarily present very femininely so uh but yeah she says don't do that she's wearing a purple headscarf type thing and she says that uh Wait, oh, you read her journal in the room in front of her no it, well we'll get there don't okay worry. She's like, oh, we can, we, I, I can forgive you. It, it, it's, it's my room. It, it's you. And then she asks us about the audience. With you. Uh, if you try to read her diary here, it says uh, we should not look through a woman's belongings. And I tried to come back later and it was locked. So yeah, that's what I found. It was at the room yeah. I tried to invade. Yeah. 
Let's go ahead and consult the real net real quick. Yeah. Shotguy32 says, Cleo is a feminine name. My great-grandmother was named Cleo. One, Cleo is a beautiful name, and but, I agree, it's traditionally feminine. However, we're playing an RPG where yeah, people true. are named whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is a Grimio? Yeah, that's true. Like, it, this name association with gender is... I, I appreciate your intent, however, yeah. uh, I... So it's not me, it's me. So if you sneak out at this point and explore Greg Minister like we just did. Greg Minister. Greg Minister. Gregory Minister. This is where you go into Sonia Schillen's house and Teo is in there. Because he left when once we dispersed before dinner. And if you go and talk to Teo in there, he says, well, first of all, Sonia Shulin says that uh, we won't see our father after tomorrow. So we're supposed to believe we came up from the emperor. Our father parked us in our room and dipped to go see his mistress. But before dinner, yes. Okay. Teo tells us to leave because he has to speak with General Sonia Blade. I mean, Sonia Shulin. <laughs> okay. Uh, I actually wrote that. I don't know if I was supposed to, if I was writing a joke or if I'm just stupid. And then it's time for dinner, Eric. Uh, we do the Ted thing and then the whole ass gang is here in the banquet room. Everyone is ready to eat this shit. It's funny. This is before I met Pawn or Cleo. So my uh, next note was who the hell are these people <laughs> in my <Yeah>. house? <laughs> Pawn and Cleo can, can also be described as General Teo's like retainers. They fought alongside him and now they're here as his bodyguards slash helpers. Do we read Gremio as weaker because he physically has an injury visible? Uh, like some, more I, subservient than the other. A cross-shaped scar on the face usually means you, you've been through some shit and you, you've survived some battles and you're awesome. But Gremio doesn't actually ever do anything that's that awesome. Spoilers. His weapon is a goddamn hatchet. So, we'll see. A hatchet will fuck somebody up. As we eat new music, main theme arrange ensemble version, please. Mm-hmm. But it's the same as before, but with synths in the background now, which are nice. Before you sit down, you can talk with everybody. Did you do that? I don't think so. Okay, well, I did. And I talked with Cleo. Cleo said it'll be some time before we can eat with Ted again. Oh, uh, no, I think she meant, I think I meant Teo. She suggests that we enjoy this time together. Teo announces that he will travel north and that Tyr will be responsible for his household in his absence. So this seems like a rite of passage to me. Like my son is 16. He can now take care of these mm-hmm. much older adults who have fought in wars. Teo then tells Grimio he's taking care of Tyr since he was a baby and thanks him for his efforts. Grimio is taken aback, saying it's his job that's serving the young master as a pleasure for him. I, I got curious about the ages here, mm-hmm. so I looked them up. And if you look it up on the wiki, it will give you an age range because it's giving you the age during the, quote, gate rune wars, which is the, th- that's what's going to be happening in this game. Jesus. But this is the last year of that, so take the latter age. So Grimio is currently... 36. 27. Fuck. So he has been Tears nanny since he was 12 years old basically that you should not employ children oh okay well we don't know if Grimmy has any family he may have also been you know also uh, Pawn is 29 Cleo is 28 uh, who Teo is also so uh, ancient yes so the older characters in this game I was triggered a bit when Grimio called Tyr the young master because I thought of Bart Fatima instantly yeah when I when when uh, Bart Fatima was called the young master I thought of Grimio okay so. great <laughs> excellent Ouroboros of young masters <laughs> Teo tells Pawn and Cleo that he's counting on them to, quote, help and protect. Teo then asks Ted to always be a good friend to Tyr. And I'm, I'm, the Ted adoption thing is striking me as, like, when your best friend of life is like, I got to tell you a secret. And then, like, yeah. I just, like, for a period of time, I wondered if only I could see Ted briefly. Yeah. Teo then raises a glass and says, to my son, to the Empire. And that, to me, seems like an improper work-life balance. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> to your dead mother. Yeah. It then fades to black. The music stops and it's black and white. And then the picture comes back up. I briefly start to worry that my G comp 8.2 component input switcher is failing. But then Teo brings Grimio to Tyr's bedroom and talks and his portrait is in color. Okay, good. Like the black and white really threw me off yeah. here. Teo tells Grimio that he won't be seeing Tyr's face for a while. Grimio asks if he should wake him up. Teo replies, no, let him sleep. It's not as if we'll never meet again. Chris, they ain't going to meet again, at least not for a long time. Dramatic irony. Yes. Teo asks Grimio to take good care of Tyr. Fade to black. Birds chirp. That's right. It's morning, I guess. Grimio, back in color, walks up the stairs and wakes up Tyr. He kind of pins Teo leaving without saying anything on Tyr being a late sleeper. Mm -hmm. Grimio then informs Tyr he's now a member of the Imperial Forces. You're a cop. (laughs) Welcome to life, kid. Yeah, it's time to go be a troop. Grimio joins the entourage. I walk downstairs. Pawn and Cleo are here. Pawn wonders when his next day off is, but then hears Tyr coming down the stairs and feigns excitement. I think he's trying to ask Cleo out on a date. Oh, you think so? Yeah, because he's asking like uh, something about a day off or something. To go out and like do stuff? Yeah. Cool. I think we can install Pawn as a retrograde amnesia 
beat ass character. Oh, an he, ass beater. Yeah, his his uh, his ass. His number one hobby is beating ass. He wants to beat ass. Like that's what he's ready to go. He's ready to go get in some fights. Likes to fight, guy. Yeah. Pawn continues. Whether it's battling bandits on Mount Sifu or monsters on Lake Torrin, Pawn here is your man. And I was like, day off from what? What's your job? Yeah. I didn't know they were retainers at this point. Yeah. Cleo then tells Pawn to calm down, suggesting all Pawn ever thinks about is fighting. She says you act too much like Goku. Hey, it's me, Goku! Our job is to protect the young master. Pawn suggests they be on their way to the palace, and then Pawn and Cleo join the entourage. <laughs> do Pawn and Cleo, like, are they also now under Craze's employment since I'm under Craze's? Like, since I got a job, do they get a new job? Yeah, like, it's like subleasing kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, do they live in the house? Like, do you all have, like, what do you all? Yeah. I don't know. I try and leave and Ted, who I've completely forgotten about, rolls out of bed. Yeah. He then playfully chastises Tyr for forgetting about him, and my guy gets entouraged. If, and yeah. I'm like, Ted is invisible. Nobody else can see Ted. <laughs> like, I thought the game was doing some shit here. If you go upstairs before walking out the door, Ted will be like, let me sleep a little bit longer. Then you immediately walk out the door, and Ted's like, let's fucking go. Dude, I, as someone, my wife has a lot of difficulty waking up, and like... I wake her up and she's like, give me another minute. And like, she'll find like, it's 60 seconds. It's not going to make a difference. Just fucking get it. I, yes, I can. So, I, can t- I totally relate to yeah. this, this mentality. Like yeah. that sounds stupid, but Ted is playing the long game. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He needs that. He needs those minutes. He needs those gains. I then have control. I leave town and get to the world map where music, tiny characters in a huge world plays. I yeah. get into a fight with three mosquitoes and everyone dies. Yeah. Don't do that. I should have told you. I meant to t- give you a couple of uh, to explore. beginner tips. Do not leave the town. Uh, until you're like level five. Will this game have battles, tutorials, or was I supposed to read the manual? Shit, I find a scan of the manual online and read it. No, the, the game should have blocked you from going out into the, into the world map. Well, That's the mosquitoes you... killed me, Chris. Yes, West Nile. Yeah. I guess more on the battle system when we actually get to do battles. I go to the castle. Mm-hmm. Before I went and reported crazy, I was go- going around talking to guys because I didn't do it earlier. Talking to some guys, yeah. Um, and most of it, I think, was pretty much the same as what you said before, but our ga- but if we... Air guys. Air guys. Air guys. God bless the ring. The guy in the front recognizes and says our dad must be proud that we're also a cop now. Another guy says that the real reason for Teo's trip to the north is to, quote, put down the rebels, which could be a euphemism for murdering poor people. Yeah, dad's part of the death squad. Yeah. He says they call themselves the Liberation Army, but according to this guy, they are nothing but traitors. The Antifa actually means fascist, Chris. Oh, okay, got it. Finally, it makes sense. The maid out here says she got covered in mud over at the stables. I'm like, what stables? I haven't been to the stables. Yet. I went so, there, man. So I went to go check out the stables, but guess what's different now? No horses docked to the gates. There's horses, but also there's a fucking dragon out here. Oh, shit. The one that we're going to meet later. There's a kid out there who uh, the attendant out here calls a punk. He said he was looking forward to meeting a real Dragonite, but this punk shows up. Dragonite from Pokemon? Dragon Knight. Excuse me. Dragon Knight. You know, sorry, I'm from Kentucky. The said punk's name is Fooch or Fooch. Uh, who tells us country bumpkins to stop staring at Black, his dragon. Ted pops out and wants to fucking fight, but Grimio says we must hurry to Craze. And then you can speak with Black and he sounds like a goddamn elephant. Yes, it is literally an elephant sound effect. Yeah. So something uh, very upsetting to me is I was running around my neighborhood the day I played this part, Mm -hmm. and down the street is a pickup truck that on the hood has letters in vinyl and it says, Fudge. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. A word I've never heard in my life, I've now encountered twice. Good. Nice to see Fudge. He's a, he's a young boy. He's got, he, he is dressed like a dragon knight, which I think means he has a helmet with like w- dragon Wings. fins on it or something. I, yeah. we, we meet Fudge more later and yeah. I didn't like his attitude, Chris. No. He, well, I mean, the stable boy called him a punk and this, guess what? It's true. Stable boy was right. Damn it, stable boy. Music. Royal Palace consultation plays as I walk inside and report to Craze. Craze opens up by telling Tyr that he's late and he can't expect to be pampered all of his damn life. Mm-hmm. Craze says northeast of Gregminster lies the magician's island. Holy shit. Yep. Lecknat. Lecknat. L-E-K-N-A-A-T. Fake net. How do you say that? Initializing fake net. Lecknat. Recently, I found out if a fake net can't say something, she'll just say all the letters. It's really funny. Great. <laughs> I expect that to happen here. Uh, yeah, we're like sp- not the seer lives there. Mm-hmm. She has been commissioned to look into the stars. Go there and bring me her results. And I'm like, oh fuck, they base the empire around astrology. Yeah, the name of this document that we're retrieving is called the Astral Conclusions, which I really like how that sounds. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I don't. Craze asks if Tyr was listening and then asked where the Magician's Island is. I know this because I am taking notes for my podcast, Retrograde Amnesia. Did you reply correctly? Yes, it's northeast of Gregminster. Quote, somewhere on Earth is one of the replies. Yeah, I picked that. What'd you do? What happened? I can't treat him like a fool just because I'm the son of a great general. Keep acting up and I'll be sorry, is what he tells me. 
Crazy goes on, there's no boat there, but he's arranged for a dragon knight from the Knights of Dragons then to take us there. A dragon will transport us to the island. Crazy also tells us that Leknot, Leknot? Yeah. Lugnut, the seer, is the younger sister of court magician Wendy, so you better behave yourself. Yeah, so this is like very obviously a world where magic and I guess astrology too is woven into the, the fabric of, of governance and daily life. Yeah, the I mean, fact that there's magicians gives me more faith in astrology. Like yeah. if actual astrology was real, we would have actual magicians. I mean, think too. about it, there's a, there's a, a rune attacher vendor out in the city for anyone just to go use so yeah. like if you if you have a crystal you can then use runes so like david blaine is not telling me about mythology or uh, astrology i hope not well did you talk to craze again oh no he refuses to tell you where the barn is he says oh. somewhere in the palace you fool find it yourself and let your babysitter not get the hell out of here <laughs> then we have a little bit of a, a party regroup here and pawn said he was looking forward to beating ass but he's disappointed that this turns out to be an errand I said, Pawn, you're in an RPG. This is your first quest. Yeah, of course. At least we're not finding cats, Pawn. Jesus. I love uh, how your first job is also now their job. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great. Cleo tells him to chill. The astrological results are very important for the Empire. It's not such a bad assignment. The president's reading horoscopes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Grimio is excited that this won't be dangerous. And Ted is pretty excited that we get to meet a real Dragon Knight, despite just wanting to fight one a minute ago. Yeah, Ted, I'm like, I'm instantly convinced that they don't belong here. We'll be the first one to die much like Ramus, or not die, but like leave the party in Lunar. Yeah, well. Like, the, the, Ted just does not fit in this world to me at all. It's like, you're, like, I get why Pawn and Cleo are here, but Ted is very much like kid brothers. And I'm like, you're not employed by the Emperor. Uh, you're not a retainer. You're my stepbrother. Fucking go home and be a kid man. I think that's what you're supposed to think, Eric, because okay. we're about to find out some more about Ted right now because we get there in Futch. Is that what we're saying? That? Futch or Fooch? Uh, fucking not. Futch. Fake net. Initializing fake net. Futch. As in, go Futch yourselves. Futch says, uh, asks if we're the police. He properly introduces himself at, as in his dragon, Black. And Black spreads his wings and makes the elephant noise yet yep. again. <laughs> Ted tells Fooch that he's just a punk. He gets mouthy. Yeah, and then he claps back. Ted reports that he happens to be 300 years... Dot, dot, dot. Wait, like, what? what the fuck? What the fuck, Ted? Is this what you were going to tell us earlier? And yeah, you tell like, this fucking guy? Why would you know somebody... I know it's a video game, but it just... Like, I'm in my head, it's Tears' first day on Earth. Like, his memory just got reassigned or rewiped or some shit like that. We could have held the 300 years thing to a little bit closer to the vest for a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah, like, they're just giving... They're setting up their mysteries and knocking the bowling pin over, like, 30 seconds later. Yeah. But there's still a lot of other good things going on in the background that we're not privy to yet. Grimio tells Ted to shut the fuck up. We need to be on our way. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Chris. Ted's secret's starting to slip. Ted tells Grimio to let go of him and sense that he was called a punk. Cleo can't believe this shit. Pawn wants to get going. Yep. We all get on and Futch says, hold on tight or we'd fall off. Quote, not that I'd mind if one of you did fall off. Cleo tells us to quit fighting in the basket, which I guess is if they were in a dragon basket. <laughs> I love being in a dragon basket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Music, Fly Back, plays as Soikoden apparently has transition sequences with black horizontally soaring throughout the cloud. I have the, this track called Fly Black Fly. Interesting choice. <laughs> yeah. I secretly wonder if Moriyama wanted to put a horizontal shooter as a transition sequence for these. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. But I bet that was probably impossible. Now we go to Magician Island, or yeah. do we? Let's do all of Magician Island, because if we don't get through Magician Island, we're never going to get through this fucking video game. That's the point. It's retrograde amnesia. I know, but okay. something has to happen, right? <laughs> Magician Island music. Waves rolling around and hitting the beach while birds chirp. This sounds great. Better than the beach noises in Chrono Cross, Chris. The music and sound effects are fantastic. It is. They are. After we land, Futch wonders if the speed made us dizzy, but his job ends here, and he'll wait until we're done. I head north. It's a brown jungle and i hear music black forest yeah did the melody of black forest make you think of anything no it made me th it made me hear and, and it, it almost sounds like it was lifted like the jawas theme from star wars the the you can't the, the no, it's, that's the ewok chant um what the fuck is that i'm not good at doing tones we can't include star wars music or we'll get copyright no no we can, yeah we can't yeah. do it just look it up on your own okay. and, and you'll see what i'm saying and we, uh, we're here to explore the forest now. Eric, what happens in the forest? Guess what? There's battles. Confrontation with monsters is the music. I love confrontations with monsters. I fear nothing, Eric. I'm interested in your perspective on, on the battle system. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that? What you, I was what you, overwhelmed. The, Despite the fact that Dave Halverson said I would have clean menus, I, was, I had a little bit too much to do, and I just mashed attack over and over again. Yeah. There's four choices. It's fight, let go, or run, depending what on... What the, the fuck does like... Does that mean, like, what does let go? That means the monsters are want to run from you, and you're going to let them go. Oh. The localization is kind of we rough. We show there. mercy. Okay. Yeah. Bribe and free will. Free will is, is auto attack. Okay. I was going to say, is that yeah. like leaving them with their own devices? Type yeah. Thing? It, it, well, it's straight up all physical attacks. They won't use runes or use magic or anything of that nature. 
It, it all goes. Runes, it. magic, things of that nature. Now, the uh, the power of the PlayStation here in the battle will use a sort of a dynamic camera to zoom yeah, in and out. It's an isometric point of view with an interesting, like the battlefield isn't a map. It's a polygon. Right? Yeah. Like it's a, a, a texture mapped um, sheet. Yeah. And of course, the most mind blowing thing about this is that characters will attack at the same time. Like all characters will just, if, if every, every character is targeting a different guy and their their speeds correlate with the, the order of the, of the turn order, they will all just jump and fight. They're, you may even have two characters attacking at once. Cool. Um, the other thing that you can... Uh, is that combo at all, or is that just a... Uh, it doesn't combo, it's just, it, it's just not necessarily, but there are Unite attacks. I don't know if you found those or, or not. I did use one. Someone yeah. has a Unite attack. Pawn, I did it just to see what would happen. Pawn and Grimio have a tal- uh, an attack called the, the Talisman attack. It costs no skill points, because there are no skill points in this game. You can just do it whenever. Cool. Best used when you're using a going on a, a single target. Pawn also has a rune attached. It's called the boar rune. It lets him do a very strong, sick ass, beat ass combo. Boar like the animal. Yep. And he w- it doesn't cost anything. It, you, he just beats ass, but he has to sit, sit out the next turn. He's incapacitated for one turn. Not something that you can tell from the the battle screen, but if you go into the menu screen and you look at the runes, you will notice that Ted has a rune. It is called question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark. So uh, Ted has a rune that you don't know what it's called. Chris, so, Ted's full of secrets. Yeah, he is full of secrets. And, uh, of course, we, we fight the bad guys. The, 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 sa- the sound Excuse effect... Me, bad guys. Fur first, please. Fur first, Holly Boys, I think, yes. are also here. Uh, and Little it, green uh, weeds. We're fighting weeds again. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they will do their little, like, hop attack. To They'll, like, h- slowly hop and, and attack a guy. But sometimes they'll say, fuck it, and they'll just keep going over off the screen. Over. No, they'll just keep going off the screen. They'll Charge just be, away. No, they'll just be gone. It's, it's hilarious. I was a little anxious here because I have no way to heal myself, really. And, like, character inventory, by the way, is what you got on you, friend. Everybody has their own inventory. Yeah, There's no massive item it's, stash. It's pretty bad. It's one, You can stack some items, but not all of them. Yeah, you can uh, stack, like, like six, medicine. Yeah. On the bright side, medicines drop. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the game accounts for it. Yeah. But you're right. There are There is no MP in this game. We don't have any magic yet, but there is no MP in this game. You just have a singular... You have a number of uses of spells, which we'll, we'll get into later. You can use X amount of spells before you rest the next time. So it's very much about managing your spell inventory, for lack of a better term. At some point, I encounter Luck Luke. I have always called this uh, this boy, a brown-haired boy wearing a circlet. Uh, he's got kind of like magic robes on. I've always called him Luke, but okay. we can call him Luck. No, I don't we know. We can call him Luke. Okay. I realize that's a long U. Yeah. Green and white priest clothes. Thinks it's unusual to have visitors on this island and wants to prepare an appropriate welcome. Mm-hmm. They say wind rune, and we get a new battle transition screen to fight a golem. Yeah. New music, ultimate enemy plays. Oh, the golem is the ultimate enemy. Yeah. This is not much of a battle. You have very few choices here because all you can really do is attack or use the boar rune. Hit it, hit. But do you know what's unique about this battle? What's that? Instead of a sprite, it's a polygon. Oh, the okay. Yeah, you're right. Polygons. Yeah, good point. But I kill this thing to death and the music victory theme plays. Mm-hmm. I get 1,500 bits and I get to level four. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed the level scale, how the level uh, leveling up system works here? Very slowly. So well, I tried to grind and it didn't really work out. You always level up after getting 1,000 experience points. But there are diminishing returns. So you can't keep fighting weak enemies and getting the same amount of experience points. If you want to level up, level up until the experience points stop filling up quickly. And then you know that you are basically at the max level for that area. Okay. So the game it's scales... It's artificially gated. Yeah, it, yeah, sort of. You could still do it, but it would take a long time. But the game controls for... Uh, what type of enemy you're fighting and what level you are. So later in the game, if you get like a level two character and you go in like a level 30 area and you level up, that level two character will like level up like 40 times. Cool. <laughs> like that's, it, that's efficient actually. Yeah. For a game that, that's going to ultimately have a lot of characters, it, it's very useful. One other thing about the battle system that I love, six characters. It's yes. Awesome. It's nice. Great. It's yeah. the most I've ever had in a game. Yeah. Black Forest resumes. Luke says they're impressed and says Imperial Guards with some sarcasm. Pawn takes offense, asking Luke, the person who just sicked a rock golem on us, if they have something against us. Luke's like, take it easy. I know who you are. I was just testing you. I guess you're the real thing. Come this way, honored guests. I follow Luke up one screen and reach a massive blue and silver stone temple. I go inside and the place is largely empty. I find a staircase and head up. I climb up way too many goddamn flights of stairs. The stair climbing animation in this game is whack. Yeah, it's kind of like a bouncy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it looks unnatural. Yeah. It looks like it's my first 32-bit RPG. Yeah, th- this place is very obviously like a 
Magic like, castle. A, a temple, yeah. A stone temple is kind of uh, have it. But those like blue crystal columns, kind of ominous looking. Reminds me of the last dungeon in Star Ocean, the secret place where... Yeah. Whatever. At the top, I find a figure in a blue robe, like not... She was expecting us, the messengers from the Empire. Quote, oh my, what a cute messenger we have this year. Yes. So that says, one, we're cute, and two, this happens every year. Yeah, and also that Legnot and her uh, and her sister both uh, acknowledge the uh, the good looks of young boys. Yeah. Ooh. Legnot continues, I'm sorry, you're a soldier of the Empire. I shouldn't call you cute. I have prepared the astral conclusions. Mm. Follow me. Then Tyr alone, with no party, follows Legnot up. New music. Touching theme? The theme of touching. The camera opens on a mosaic stained glass window and slowly pans down to reveal Tyr on a blue carpet in front of a seated, throned Legnot. Chris, what do you read into the window? Like, is that symbolic of anything or is it just cool well, stained glass? I think it, it kind of looks like a dragon. Yeah. A little bit. I, 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 I didn't recognize it as any particular rune or anything. Like not Hans Tyr, the astral conclusions. Yeah, but she spits exclamation marks as she does so. Yeah. Then asks Tyr's name. Tyr tells her the name I named Tyr. Tyr. Yeah. And she thinks it's a friendly name. As an astrological magician, it's her job to see the future and the stars. Quote, but the future is not unchangeable. All I can see is the overall flow of things, which is a bullshit answer. <laughs> Tyr, you are bearing a huge burden in the flow of destiny. And you know what that says? It means that uh, fate is changeable? It means I'm the protagonist. Oh, also, yeah, the hero protagonist, yeah. The future is not unchangeable. You will have to make painful choices and experience a great deal of pain and sorrow. All I know is what the outcome is, but always remember that your destiny is in your own hands. Doesn't that contradict itself, Chris? Yes, but if you're familiar with the concept of destiny and you are trying to argue against it, then you must use the term destiny to argue against it. Basically. Yeah, I guess so. This game diverges from our last two games we played where things are kind of fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Never forget that. You must decide what is right. Do you understand? Like, not gives us the astrological things and says we'll meet again. Quote, not that I see our reunion on the stars. It's just my wish. Yes. When can I see you again? Yeah. So there's like a weird magnetism that we're expressing as the protagonist of this reality. Like, people are just enchanted by us. Yes, and especially like not because she has got this this, uh, this seer ability to understand that uh, we not only are the protagonist, but we are a special protagonist. Obviously, like, special boy of destiny confirmed already. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I make fun of it, but I'm wondering if they're communicating things to the player about the world or communicating things to the player about themselves and, like, what the difference is between I, both I think the answer, yeah, I think the answer is both. If I speak to look not again, she just tells Tyr to believe in himself great advice i guess when i get back out ted who i now hate tells Tyr he sure took his time then asks what happened pawn says fuck that if we don't hurry futch will get impatient and leave us can they do that cleo tells pawn not to be rude to like not but she isn't even here and i think this may have been localized from a spreadsheet i think that is true yeah oh, it's certainly true like not then walks down and observes that we might all be bored she says luke will take us down to the shore she calls luke's name and they fucking zap in like electricity like Dot commands Luke to take us to the shore and says she doesn't have time for any of their stupid tricks. Luke says they would never trick anyone. Lying to your boss, Chris. Mm -hmm. Cleo says we'll be on our way, which gets Like Knot's attention. She then beelines over to Cleo and says, "You, your job is to protect Tyr. Take this; it should come in handy sometime." Fire crystal acquired. Yeah. And now, me, the person reading this, just remembered I got that because I haven't done shit with it since. Yeah, you can go to the Rune Master and attach it to Cleo and oh, have fire magic. Thank you, I'll do that later. Yeah. Flaming arrows. Luke asks if we're ready and then to close our eyes and then says, Wind Rune, show your power. We go to the beach. Waves keep rolling in. Futch is thinking we're late and asks Black if they should leave. Quote, the Imperial Guard should be able to fend for themselves. We all be men one by one like fucking Star Trek. Pawn can't believe this shit. He's never seen such magic. Gremio, I think, sarcastically says, You are a worthy apprentice to Lady Legnot. They notice Ted isn't here. Then Ted beams in late and falls about six feet with cartoon sound effects. <laughs> Ted calls someone a punk and tells them to watch it. Yeah, I, I think he's still uh, beefing with Fooch. Fooch tells Ted he better watch his mouth. Gremio, who his mom, is sick of all this fighting. Yep. We all get on black and get the hell out of here. And you can get the hell out of this podcast <laughs> as we consult the real net. Initializing real net. Hello, real net. Thank you for joining us for our inaugural episodes, plural. This game does have swearing in it, right? So that is interesting. Is like the, one of the first games to use bad words. 
Like, I think Craze says hell later. Yeah. Yeah, Shy Guy 32 feels me here. KH Insider's music section is insane. Yeah, they got some good, they got a lot of shit. That's where I get all my soundtracks from. I got one off Zofar's Domain. I, that's usually the first Google I result. spent a lot of time on Zofar's Domain yesterday, getting, getting some PlayStation uh, hacking utilities to try to get those sound effects. I feel like if that was possible, it would have been done by now, right? Like, no one, no one's mind Zeno Gears yet. I think depending on the audio format, that could be impossible. Yeah, it's, it has to do with how, that, how it was encoded. It's weird. Cooked Pages says, I think my personal favorite name was Horse McDoll. <laughs> that's a pretty good name. We, we talked about some good names earlier in one of the Discord things. Uh, my favorite all time uh, translating to English without speaking English name is Bobson Dugnut out of that baseball game. Apparently, I said the Emperor has a thick ass. Thanks, yeah, Kel. That's right. That's yeah. good. John Doe says, uh, speaking of the, uh, the, the introduction Emperor reception scene, John Doe says, Big Robert Barath- Baratheon and Ned Stark energy from these two old jerk offs, like Teo and, and uh, Barbarossa. I think so, but like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, like we, we used to fight a war, now but we're like, in charge. I was going to say, but Teo still appears to be in fighting shape, but that still appears true. So, mm-hmm. Cook's page just says, good guy, Greg Minster. Good guy, Greg. Good guy, Greg Minister represent, yeah. 13-year-old memes. Yeah. Please see our Star Ocean uh, podcast for more information about... Uh, Greg Minister. ...why we say Greg Minister. John Doe says, I think Barbarossa is doing a mind game here on Teo in terms of sending him to the north. Separating you from your child. Yeah. Yeah, the Beyonder mentions that there are characters in this universe who have, like, guns and shit, too. So there's some... There's varying levels of technology depending on where, where the game is. I just like to place. have some like consistency about the world I'm in where they just can't invent like laser guns. Or, yeah. I mean, if, if it is guns, I hope it's like they have to like load it like a world or a civil war. I'm pretty sure there's a character that we get later that has a gun. Great. So we, we, we can diagnose okay. this later. Uh, Sunny Tail says every podcast always, is always about toilets, which is, I don't remember talking about toilets today, but you, we probably did. Yeah, but the plumbing, the oh, existence yeah. of plumbing the suggests sewers. there's yeah. uh, mm-hmm. shit hole technology. Uh, let's see here. How old were you when you figure out toilets didn't require electricity? I don't think I've ever really th- thought that ever. I was probably 38 when I actually like under- began to really understood how a toilet works. Oh yeah, when in you terms take, of you, like having to fix one, you take like, those fucking things apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it's like, oh, okay. it's all mechanical. Mad genius. John Doe says Teo has his own mansion. I don't remember if the other generals do. Well, Milich does, and Sonia's house is bigger than everybody else's house. But I don't think we see Kasim, or we 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 haven't even met Kwanda yet. I think is his name. We've seen him mentioned. Everybody in the real net says Gremio's a dude. Dude confirmed. Definitely a dude. Gremio's basically like, what if old Mason were young Mason? <laughs> says John Doe. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a, that's actually really accurate. I, I want to pull um, people off the street and show them Gremio's portrait and ask, I mean, please gender this person you to can the best ask of your Brooke, abilities. You can ask Brooke when you go upstairs. She's probably, in, it's 930, she's probably asleep. Um, let's see, let's get through this. So we can go. Uh, there, I saw this earlier and I don't remember who said it, but there was some conversation about runes being physical objects. Uh, I think, I believe crystals are physical objects and runes are what the, the incantation that you make when you cast the, uh, the magic spell from the rune. Yeah. Crystals are physical objects. So like white castle burgers, but the buns aren't soggy. Yeah. How do you feel about white castle burgers? You like them? I'm fine with them. Yeah. We, we, it's uh, fine. we eat them for Valentine's day. Oh man. Yesterday. Yeah. I forgot about that. These are the candlelit dinner thing you have to do reservations for. Yeah, I think Skyline Chili does that too. Great. <laughs> we did that without making reservations one time and we walked up to White Castle on Valentine's Day and the fucking doors were locked. <laughs> no, I, we just decided to... I, I don't know if we do it every year, but we've done it a couple times. Oh, fucking Skyline, dude. SSD Ninja says this world feels kind of lived in, which I th- agree with mostly. Like, there's some generic it's dialogue here. Yeah. But yeah, but, but I think the point of Greg Minster is to be a little too clean. Yeah. Like we'll see when we get to Rockland, we can, we can experience. This can, town's main feature is a graveyard. Yeah, it's true. And everything's made of rocks. Land. John Doe says Entourage starring Tier Wahlberg. I'm Entourage. I produce Entourage. I'm Tier. Dubert says, I say, I say supper. I wish that supper was my default. But yeah, it's dinner, my, and I can't change my that. My father in law says supper. He also says icebox for refrigerator. Because oh, he prob- shit. Because he probably literally yeah, had, had, an, one. had an icebox. Yeah, my, my grandfather said icebox. But yeah, he's, uh, like mid seventies, so yeah. You got anybody in your family that calls a remote a clicker? No, no, I don't. The Beyonder says Chris and her knights were awesome, which is a Sweet Code in three reference. But I just wanted to say, just to remind you that I'm named after a character in, in Sweet Code in three. Sweet Code in three, season five. Probably not. Although I do want to play that. It's a PS2 game, Chris. It is a PS2 game. It's a good PS2 game, and don't let anybody tell you any different. John Doe says the coochie coochie treatment with the boing. <laughs> Tickling ear stuff. What was the coochie coochie treatment? That was from Zeno Gears. It was a Zeno Gears thing. That sounds Honeywoodish. Yeah, definitely. 
Cleo, uh, everybody giving you shit for not knowing uh, that Cleo was a was a was a girl, a lady. I'll take it. I deserved it. I, I feel like I was just in my actions. Mom, sister, or wife seemed like good potential fits. Some people pointed this out, and I don't know why I didn't either. But Grimio has the cross shaped scar like uh, Himura Kinchin from the anime Rooney Kinchin. Which a cross shaped scar means you took two blows at least, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you survived. Flipmanix says Pawn loves battles. Fears nothing. It's true so far. SSD Ninja says if Pawn had a job, it would be the bouncer. Yeah. Please see our special episode on The Bouncer. Yeah, you can find it on the internet for free somewhere. My friend Dragon Zord says Eric Death Count 1. It's the only time you died in this game. It's the mosquitoes. Um, yeah. So far, yeah. There are a couple of, of difficult moments, but not many. A DM difficult moment. The Beyonder says, what the fudge is happening? John Doe says, what the fudge is happening? SSDN just says that the post a picture of Kellogg's Crave cereal. Like craze, but crave. I've thought about buying crave cereal. It's like a, a standard like cereal brown thing with like allegedly like chocolate shit on the inside. And I don't know how that holds up to the scrutiny of milk. Like I'm, I'm too afraid to buy it and test it out. Yeah. John Doe points this out. Uh, how long has Ted lived with the McDowell's? Because like, wouldn't they know that he, he hasn't aged? Yeah. Like there, there's some, I mean, it, again, you, you, if you bring up those questions, the answer is it's an RPG from 1996. Don't think that hard. And I, I do think there's some magic to that, whereas games today would like be aggressive with the clues they would leave about that. So the, the real nut answers our question from earlier. Uh, the uh, the coochie coochie coo treatment is Laguna. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Flip Minix, Psycho Paladin Jr., and uh, et cetera. Okay, well, thanks, Real Net, for joining us tonight for our, uh, for our first Sui Coden session. It was a good time and I think a good episode, I hope. Uh, oh, yeah, we got to read the outro, man. In Earthworm Jim, the cow will smile and say, well done. This episode has been a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on February 15th, 2022. Thank you, Mark, for the hot sounds. You're welcome, Chris. In the music, or whatever it is. You can find us on Twitter at RetroAmnesiaPod. If you like us, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash RetroAM. Get early access. Two weeks. Bonus episodes, mini-series, voting rights for all future series, and access to the real net on Discord. And if you want to send us an email, you can email us at podcast at retrograde amnesia.com until next time Eric yes we will find and destroy God and now you may go back to sleep oh cool we almost hit the max limit for discord I mean not cool but we I mean it's cool that we that men people are here but not cool that you can only get 25 people on there. Power rank the closet. No, when we do our uh, explain the uh, the entire plot to our wives, we will we will uh, wear outfits from Milich's closet. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, we'll forget. As an astrological magician, as an astrological. Thank you, Esper Wind, for your support. I don't know what language this is, so I'm just gonna have to I am it to you sometime for the fake net to say. Okay, it's. I think it might be German. Like, this dude definitely is a hand-to-hand combat fighter, and he definitely is a hand-to-hand combat fighter once you actually get to use him. And Grimio asks if she should... He. Grimio asks if he should wake him up. Royal Palace consultation plays as I walk inside and report to Craze with a K. Craze, the newest Dairy Queen Blizzard flavor, opens up by telling Tyr that he's late, and he can't expect to be pampered all his life. Oh, can I do something first? Absolutely. Sorry, stop. Just cut that. Don't apologize. Cut, Cut it. Fuck you. Music, Royal Palace consultation plays as I walk inside and report to Craze. Craze opens up. Oh, I've already said all this shit. No, say it again because we cut it. Music, Royal Palace consultation. I love confrontations with monsters. I fear nothing. <laughs> Let me say that again. That was pretty funny. Like, not gives us shit and, s- and we'll show you the power of the next episode. Or do you want to keep going?